Welcome back to Combat Mission and Battle for Normandy for the 11th mission of the Scottish Corridor Campaign. In the last mission, the 9th Cameronians took the village of Granville with support from 9th Royal Tank Regiment. Overnight, the Germans have been pounding the place with artillery, and now at 12.15 on the 28th of June, they're launching a counterattack to try and punch into the side of the British penetration. It's our job to stop them. This means holding ground. There aren't any points for destroying the enemy in this mission. The points on offer are for maintaining exclusive control of ground objectives around Granville. Free on the far left, or objective rook from the previous mission, is worth 50 points. Fancy the area around the church corresponding to yesterday's objective bishop is worth 200. The crossroads at La Chesnay is objective loose, worth 50 points. And La Pide Motar, the area around the level crossing up on the far right is objective foot, worth 200 victory points. The enemy shelling has forced D Company back from the forward edge of Granville. I can deploy no further forward than the leading edge of objective fancy, leaving objective foot, the other major objective, a good 300 meters away. Most of the terrain is the same as the last mission, but the map has been extended westward by about 500 meters. On the left, there are open wheat fields broken up by the Firm de Chateau, in the centre there are more fields leading to the Fern de Mutz and the gardens and orchards of La Carouge. On the right an orchard extends up to Le Pie Moutard and Objective Foot, beyond which there is another big wheat field. The far right is again dominated by the railway cutting and the road running alongside it. German artillery has prevented friendly engineers from clearing the mines or the roadblocks so these are still intact. The breathing further indicates that both the cutting and the fields on the other side have been mined as well, so it's probably not a good move going that way. It does at least suggest that the enemy are unlikely to use it as an avenue of approach though. According to the briefing, the Germans are expected in reinforced company strength, backed up by half-tracks and more panthers. The panthers are the worrying part of that mix, especially because the map is relatively narrow with limited flanking opportunities. Getting angles onto that vulnerable side armour when the enemy is advancing head on is going to be tough, and I doubt they're going to helpfully sit still so I can drop artillery on them like we did in the last mission. So the German armour presents an issue. Tanks and vehicles are, however, constrained by the Bacage. Even though this isn't really Bacage country, there are plenty of low hedgerows about that are impassable to vehicles. On the left, the fields around the Firm de Chateau form an obstacle, albeit a permeable one, in the centre, the enemy will be confined to the road through Le Carouge until reaching the open fields and then being forced to divert left or right around the Bacage in front of Objective Fancy. On the right, they have easy access to Objective Foot, but then only two narrow gaps to force to progress further into the orchard. Additionally, a lot of this Bacage is riddled with infantryman-sized holes. Soldiers can pass through, but vehicles can't. Obviously I'd love to knock all the Panthers out, but breaking the German combined arms team by separating the infantry from the tanks is perhaps more realistic. With any luck, the terrain will help out with that, slowing the armour down, but not the infantry. Apart from the Panthers though, my concern is Objective Foot. Objective Fancy provides a strong point location to shield objectives free and loose, and is itself screened to the front by low Bacage. A steady linear barrage along the road in front of the objective should discourage any enemy infantry attacks. Foot, however, is not only miles away from the other objectives but way outside my deployment zone. So while the fight for fancy, free and loose looks set to be a straight up defensive engagement, the fight for foot looks like it's going to develop into more of a meeting engagement. That's a pain because it really doesn't look tremendously defensible from my side. With the railway cutting mined up, my single approach runs through the orchard up to a diagonal hedgerow. Any forces I send up that way will have their left flanks exposed to German forces in the centre, only to reach a position where they can only actually defend themselves frontally. So foot is really a big problem, and again, realistically, it might be worth ignoring, at least to begin with. It doesn't offer a particularly advantageous position, but at the same time if the enemy is obliged to take and hold it, you will have fewer troops to continue the attack into Granville proper. A solid plan might be to concentrate on defending Objective Fancy, degrading the enemy force until a counterattack to seize Objective Foot becomes a realistic option. The kicker is time. There are only 60 minutes on the clock, and I'm not sure that's enough to force the German attack to its culminating point and then go on the offensive myself. On the plus side, I have a significant force to get the job done. 
D Company, who are a bit knackered after taking Granville and then being shelled all night, have been reinforced by C Company and some battalion assets, two scout carrier platoons and a two-gun section of six-pounders. A 17-pounder AT gun has also shown up, which has the best chance of penetrating the Panthers from the front, along with more Churchills. Specifically, the rest of B Squadron 9th Royal Tank Regiment. 12 tanks in total, with a mix of 75mm and 6-pounder turrets, plus a couple of close support Churchills with the 95mm gun. I have two target reference points, but no off-map support to start with. Five minutes in, one two-tube section of the battalion 3-inch mortars will come online, as well as a four-gun troop of 25-pounders. After 15 minutes, they'll be joined by another 3-inch section. Two rifle companies and a squadron of tanks is a lot of stuff to cover a line about 550 metres long. On paper I have depths to work with, but the sight lines aren't amazing, and in any case the objectives I need to defend are far forward. Not only that, but concentrating my forces up front is going to leave them vulnerable to enemy artillery fire. So I'm inclined to just set up to defend objective fancy, and then keep a significant reserve in the rear to punch for foot when the time is right. So, I have three platoons up front. 15 platoon on the left, backed up by 9 troop and the 17 pounder, with the C Company FO up high. The 17 pounder is sighted to fire obliquely across the centre. This is risky because the gun is really too big to hide, but I wanted to give it the best diagonal field of fire I could. Also on the left I have one of the scout sections. They are going to be moving forward on turn 1 to occupy the firm de Chateau and provide some early warning. In the centre, 16 platoon is set up in and around the L-shaped building, supported by 10 troop and one of the 6 pounders which is covering the main road. They've also got one of the TRPs outside in case they need a bit of final protective fire. Out on the right, occupying Le Chesnay, is 18 platoon with the remaining 6 pounder and 8 troop deployed to cover the centre. Further right is the other scout section, who are going to be punching forward in their carriers to get up to the foot hedgerow and get some eyes looking through it. Objective Foot itself gets the second TRP ready for my intended counterattack. Further back, forming a second line, I have the other three infantry platoons ready to move up as necessary, plus the company HQs. As much as possible, I've tried to site the Churchills with buildings in between them and enemy avenues of approach. They generally have much narrower keyhole fields of fire this way, but they should be much safer, and with so many tanks I have good coverage. With any luck, they'll be getting some angles on those Panthers. Unsurprisingly, the German attack kicks off with a sky full of rockets. These start falling between objectives Fancy and Loose, causing a handful of casualties amongst the infantry. Some smoke also drops on the right, in the orchard of Loose, but I'm quickly distracted. A panther has appeared on the main road, up in La Rouge. The central six-pounder has made the spot and manages to hit the lower front plate and cause some spalling before being forced to take cover by the barrage. The panther doesn't seem to care very much, stopping on the edge of La Rouge, where the 17-pounder and some of the Churchills on the left open up. It's a bad angle, everything pings off. The panther returns fire on the 17-pounder, lightly wounding some of the crew, but evidently loses the spot, or gets distracted when the 6-pounder resumes its plinking. One of these even manages a partial penetration on the weapon mount, which obviously upsets the crew. They start to pop smoke, but before it can build, they respot the 17-pounder and start to turn to engage it. The 17-pounder fires at the same time, and the incoming AP shell pierces the now flat angle of the turret front. The Panther manages to return fire, being somewhat distressingly not dead, but the 17-pounder follows up with another penetration, and the Panther doesn't seem to react before it's concealed by the building smoke. Hopefully, it's out of action, because I got pretty damn lucky there. The 17-pounder was bouncing shells off the Panther's armour just like the smaller guns. It was only the fact that the Panther turned its turret head-on and flattened the armour angle that it managed to penetrate. That potential success aside, it's not a massively encouraging start. Not least because there are three more Panthers out on the right. I get my first enemy infantry spots out there too, right at the back of the map. It looks like the Germans are angling to attack down that flank. And this makes sense. 
that diagonal hedgerow in front of objective foot is about as far forward as they can get under cover, and it offers a sensible position for a base of fire. It's perhaps not as well covered as I would like, but the scouts are up to the hedgerow, keeping an eye on things for me, and there is some patchy line of sight from further back. I have a loose Churchill 6 from the Squadron HQ in the second line with 17 platoon, which manages to spot one of the Panthers as it approaches. It even manages to score a first round hit, a partial penetration on the lower front hull, which prompts the tank to stop, pop smoke, and reverse off for a little bit. Not long later, the smoke on the centre road clears, revealing that the first Panther has been abandoned. It also reveals another Panther, making for a total of five or a full platoon, followed up by a huge blob of infantry. This is an incredibly tempting target. Sadly, I don't have anything to hit them with. The wreck of Panther 1 provides effective cover from the front, and without a nearby target reference point, I'm not going to be able to call in any mortars or 25 pounders onto them anywhere near fast enough. In any case, I'm already using C Company's FO to start a fire mission on the foot diagonal. This isn't a very intense mission, a round or two from the 3 inch mortars a minute, but it should make that line very uncomfortable for any enemy infantry stacking up on it. There are some minor engagements while I'm letting things develop and waiting for the mortars to come in. The Panthers have by now moved up on the right, coming close enough for one of the scout teams to snipe out the tank commander before being shot up in return. I've moved the other two scout teams through the bacage on the right, being careful not to step on the mined road, where they manage to get a piet off as well. It misses, because of course it does, but it generates a little extra disruption by forcing the Panther to turn, pop smoke and reverse. The Germans get some revenge, the second centre Panther, Panther 5, spotting and knocking out the 6 pounder covering the road, but my forces are almost all out of sight and able to avoid attracting any fire. 10 minutes in, as the deep right Churchill reacquires the Panther it partialed earlier, Panther 2, and starts plinking away at it, the 3 inch mortars begin. The timing is near perfect. There's a good platoon sized blob of enemy infantry at one end of the linear mission, but the effects are minimal. The intent was long-term Aryan denial, not sudden annihilation. So the fire mission is a bit anemic, but with the mortars coming in, C Company's FO is freed up to call the 25 pounders. As a bonus, the central mob of German infantry look to be spreading towards the central wheat field as well, and I can exploit the foot TRP and the FO's line of sight to put the 25 pounders in between them and Granville. It takes longer to call the artillery in, but to my surprise, the enemy infantry don't pause at the hedgerows and plunge straight on into the big field. It seems that the enemy plan was for the rocket barrage and panthers to have suppressed or degraded the defence enough for the infantry to move forward en masse under their protective fire. That plan hasn't worked, because I've been careful to set up where it's difficult for the panthers to engage me. So when the enemy infantry swarm out into the field, the Churchills open up on them. The results are not pretty. I can't area fire because there's a very slight rise, but that's fine, they're doing the damage. The enemy infantry take heavy losses, then go to ground and disappear into the wheat. Pretty much exactly where I'm calling the 25 pounders in. Again, a bit of good luck. There's more though. Panther 2 on the right has still not spotted the deep Churchill plinking it, and eventually it takes a hit to the muzzle, probably knocking out the main gun. Panther 5, passing Panther 1's wreck on the road to keep up with the infantry push, finds itself under fire from two Churchills and the 17 pounder. Again, the 17 pounder's first hit ricochets off, the Panther spots it and prioritises it as a target, rotating its turret to get a shot off then the 17 pounder's next shot finds a flattened angle to engage with. Panther 5 stops, two 75mm AP rounds from the Churchills bounce off the turret, then the crew bail out just before the 17 pounder puts another hole in the weapon mount. That leaves the enemy with three Panthers up and running, one of which is a glorified mobile machine gun bunker. It's not going all my way. The Germans start dropping some mortars on the left, and suddenly one of the Churchills in the centre takes a hit to the front. It's only a partial penetration, and the crew suffers no casualties, but it's enough to put the tank out of action. The culprit is a WESP 105mm self-propelled gun shooting through the tall bacage on the other side of the wheat field. 
again, this fits into what I think the enemy plan is. It's exactly the kind of vehicle needed to engage enemy infantry in buildings. It just can't spot any. And without orders in the AI plan that weren't present when this campaign was made, the AI can't engage in prophylactic speculative area fire. So it's prevented from supporting the platoons of infantry pinned down in the wheat field just in front of it. Coming up on the 16th minute, the 25 pounders start to fall in. They're not tremendously accurate and they're not firing fast, but they steadily start to saturate the enemy infantry positions with 88mm high explosive shells. If they stay where they are, they'll be wiped out. If they move, the right end of the linear fire mission is pinned on the foot TRP so I can rapidly pivot it to follow them. One of the Panthers starts coming up in support, breaking through the diagonal into the wheat field, but it's spotted by the 17 pounder. Compared to the targets on the road, the angles are much better. The Panther exposes its thinner side armour and the 17 pounder knocks it out with a single shot. Two Panthers left. One of these is Panther 2, which not only has had its main gun disabled, but is being constantly pounded by non-penetrating hits to the turret. The other is Panther 4, which also starts to move forward, crossing the diagonal and entering the orchard. I'm sure some infantry are supposed to be coming with it. It's hard to tell whether I'm not spotting them or they're pinned down by the mortars and artillery. Meanwhile, over on the left, it's very quiet and it's clear that nothing is coming down towards the firm de Chateau. The scout section I moved up there on turn one have had no problems whatsoever. They've been standing ready with a piet in case anything tank-like gets close enough for them to ambush, while the C Company sniper team I sent along with them have been calmly picking off enemy infantry in the wheat field. With that position unthreatened and the panther threat seriously reduced, I make the decision to move 9 troop up to get some flanking fire onto the centre field and the right. It's a risk, but one mitigated by patchy line of sight and a slight slope. The first tank sets off just as Panther 4 advances into the orchard. The Churchill makes the spot and gets a shot off while still on the move, penetrating Panther 4's sidearm. Obviously there are some advantages to moving at a snail's pace. Panther 4 is still up and running. It turns to put its frontal armour towards the front of the chateau and starts to reverse, exposing its rear armour to the peart wielding scout team waiting in the vacage. To the surprise of absolutely no one, they miss. But Panther 4 has pulled back and exposed its side armour to the tanks at Le Chesnay, as well as the Churchill in depth. Having been consistently denied by the frontal armour of Panther 2, they lay into Panther 4's flank, scoring two penetrations in quick succession. The scouts join in and fire off their last Piat bomb, which hits the side skirt and does no damage. The Piat curse continues. Panther 4 remains in place, disappearing behind a smokescreen, but undoubtedly having suffered significant damage. After this, there's relative quiet for a few turns. I move the rest of 9 troop up to the front of the chateau. One of these is hit by the wesp, but it's evidently out of heat shells, and although the HE does some heavy damage to the tracks, it's otherwise okay. Eventually, the Germans make another push forward into the right orchard. Panther 2 moves up, along with some more visible infantry and a half-track. At about the same time, the smoke that Panther 4 popped disperses and it's rapidly finished off. That leaves Panther 2, the mobile machine gun bunker, moving into an L-shape formed by the Churchills at Le Chesnay and across the map at Ferme de Chateau. It's not as clear-cut as that. The line of sight through the trees is patchy, but 9 troop over on the left don't disappoint. They quickly take out the half-track, then focus down Panther 2, which can only angrily spray the TCs with coax. It tanks a few shots on its armour, then advances further down the road and exposes its flank. One partial penetration immobilises it. Again, it's briefly saved by popping smoke, but with the engine out, it's still there when it clears. The Churchills put it out of its misery. That's taken the last Panther out of the equation. Not something I was really expecting to say. And with the enemy infantry pulverised, it's time to kick off the counterattack. A little like the last mission, with the anti-tank threat gone, I can flex the Brits' combined arms muscle. In short order, I'm calling in the second 3-inch mortar section on objective foot, bringing Churchills up for direct fire and pushing 17 platoon forward to exploit. On the left, I send two of 9 troops tanks up to enfilade the hedgerow behind the wheat field. In the centre, 
I push another tank forward to engage from an objective fancy. This attracts the attention of the Wesp, but although it scores a direct hit, it fails to inflict any significant damage and doesn't survive the return shot. On the right, a close support Churchill is immobilized by a Panzerschreck, and there are a few threats still lurking about. A 37mm support Hartrek and a Stummel at objective foot, plus a Marder tank destroyer hanging around in the rear, but I've still got half an hour on the clock easily enough time to deploy overwhelming force. After a turn in which the support hard track is nailed by a Churchill and the Stummel catches a 3 inch mortar bomb, the Germans surrender. A total victory for the Brits then, but I was well on my way to achieving my objectives. All in all, I lost 12 men KIA and 13 wounded, plus a single Churchill and a Lloyd carrier that was unfortunate enough to have a rocket land right next to it. That feels like an incredibly small casualty list, especially compared to what I was expecting. The enemy, on the other hand, have had a very bad day. 138 dead and 64 wounded, plus all 5 Panthers, the Wesp and 3 half tracks. 93 of those casualties were caused by 3 inch mortars and 25 pounders directed by the C Company FO. It's easy to blame the AI for screwing up the attack here and crowding all its infantry into the wheat field like it wanted to get them wiped out. But the difficulties in getting the AI to carry out coordinated complex attacks notwithstanding, that successful artillery barrage was the result of a lot of different pieces coming together. If I hadn't had the FO in that position and the TRP at objective foot and the scouts forward to see the enemy coming, and the keyhole Churchills to pin them in place, the artillery would probably have been too late. Part of the trick is getting all the ands to stack up before the battle even starts. Regardless, the Cameronians have repelled the German counterattack. In the next mission, later in the day, C Company is going to try and further secure their position by taking the Granville Chateau just off the left map edge. So we'll see how well I do when it's my turn to attack across open fields again. That's all for this video. If you want to support the channel, see videos early and have a say in which weapon effects shorts are next, there's a link to the Patreon in the description. Regardless of whether you do, I hope you'll enjoy this one and I'll catch you in the next video.